Facts, we live in that luxury. My niggas be drilling the life as a villain. We work trying to flip at that peso. I lost my nigga, think about him every day. Still another day go. She wanna fuck, I just want the top. So I show the shorty his case closed. We took two hours, turned into a dub. We learned how to switch up that angle. Switch up that angle, take a shot on her booty like bangles. Sup? No. I was attacked at a pharmacy. I never understood that. Right? Words. Look at this. Pharmacy. Fuh. Fuh. That's an F. Fuh. Pharmacy. Why is there a PH right there? Why is there a PH in pharmacy? In the word pharmacy, like, I never understood that. What is that called? Words that sound like, letters that sound like they should be in the word, but aren't nowhere in the word. Like, remove PH and put an F right there. You're still going to get the same sound. Pharmacy. Fuh. That's like, you put a PH instead of an F. It's like... You putting uh, uh, the letter B in my name. Mark, but you put Marcus, like you put B at the end of Marcus, at the end of the word of the name Marcus. Marcus. There's no B whatsoever. There's no sounding. There's no, like there's no reason why there should be a B in the letter I mean, in the in the name Marcus, but it's silent. It's silent though. It's silent. What? Same thing with knife. Put an N. What's the K for? Like, okay, I just never understood it. My bad. Okay, I'm going. Sorry. This happened a little over a decade. Wow. We just we started like that. All right. All right. Got it. Go. When I was an undergrad, I worked as a pharmacy technician my sophomore through senior years. At a pharmacy, of course, you have regulars. One regular was Joe, a mid-thirties man with long straggly hair and an affinity for bizarre outfits. God damn it! He was very sweet, but also very ill, mentally and physically. Nah, he just, he's not, what did, what did you say he was? What did you say he was? Hold on. Hold on. Go back. Hold on. Hold on. So very ill. No, no, no. Go back. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. But also very... Okay. Hold on. Move. Come on. He was very sweet. Okay, he's not sweet. Anybody that wears a mask like that, you're not sweet. You're just ill. You're crazy. You're cluck. You're sus. In cahoots and sus suits. Also very ill, mentally and physically. He was on a cocktail of antipsychotics, anti-anxiety, anti-depression, etc. God damn. Also, he was on medicine for AIDS. Wow. Normally, Joe would come in with his mother, who took care of him. However, his mother was older and had her own health problems. Towards the end of my junior year, Joe started coming in by himself, so he would walk from his home or take a taxi. Joe told me frequently that I looked like a young Michelle Pfeiffer, that I should be in L.A., yada yada. Aside from the curly blonde hair, I never really saw the resemblance, but okay. I was polite, told him thanks, and asked him how his mother was. Made general small talk while I rang up his scripts. He never gave me the beware vibe. My senior year, Joe's mother came in without him. Yeah. Yeah, the reason he didn't give you the, the uh, beware or the cluck vibes. Sorry, Rens. Allergies. It's because he's probably a pro at that shit. 
and told us that Joe wasn't doing well. He was refusing to take his antipsychotics, and she was getting too old to defend herself if Joe went into a rage. She was having him placed in a home for patients like Joe. I didn't know until that day that Joe was technically under guardianship. What? The courts and his doctors deemed him too... Yo, my man Joe is just going through a lot right now, bro. Like, a lot. Like... Like a lot. How did he get the, to this point? I need a backstory on Joe. To make important financial and medical decisions, Joe's mother gave us the medical release so that Joe's new home could send their staff to pick up his medicine. We didn't see Joe for about four months. It was the end of my senior year, a Friday night. Just me and the pharmacist were working because Friday nights are slow. I was reading a magazine when I heard, Hey, Michelle. I'm not Michelle, so I didn't look up. Then angry, Michelle. And a slap on the counter in front of me made me look up. It was Joe. He was bleeding profusely and left a bloody handprint on the counter. I was shocked and all I could do was slowly back away to put distance between myself and the very bloody Joe. The pharmacist came rushing over to ask Joe what he was doing here. His home had picked up his meds on Tuesday. I wanted to see Michelle. I miss her. Then he started opening the waist-high door to get behind the pharmacy counter. The pharmacist called the store manager and told the manager to call 911. Well, why Joe playing? Why Joe? He Joe knows he can just hop over that motherfucker. He can just, you know what I mean? Yeet right over that. They just right there. They just right there. What is he doing? Talking about some? What are you? What? Are you, what? Bitch. I'm. <laughs> talking about. What? He called Joe's mother. Michelle, come here. Give me a hug. I'm good. No, I don't think that would be appropriate, Joe. Give me a hug. Then he just started screaming this over and over and attempting to climb over the counter. The pharmacist told me to go into the back storage room and lock the door. This just pissed Joe off. He started picking up items which covered them in blood and threw them at us. It was a chaotic mess. A patron was about to attempt to subdue Joe, but both the pharmacist and I both shouted not to touch him due to him being covered in blood and positive for HIV. We told the small crowd that had formed to leap for their safety as Joe was flinging items and getting blood everywhere. Eventually, the police and EMTs arrived. The store manager must have explained the blood and HIV issue because they had on protective gear, long gloves, face masks, etc., and were able to forcibly sedate Joe. The store had to be shut down, and a special cleaning crew had to come in and clean the entire store. Joe's mother came to apologize after the store reopened. She explained that Joe had developed an obsession for me and grew angrier and angrier each month when he was not allowed to tag along to pick up his meds. He attacked one of their home residents the night of the incident, so the home grounded him and sent him to his room. Joe broke his window and crawled out through the broken glass and walked to the pharmacy. The home did not know he had broken out until his mother called frantically. His mother was considering suing the home for negligence and she had moved Joe to a more secure mental health facility. Wow. So that home that he was in was already clucked. That's crazy. Oh, shit. I forgot. <laughs> when the man I saw at my apartment. It was around the time that our area was plagued by lots of sexual assault cases. And there was advice for us, which used to be that if someone followed you, look straight at his eyes and talk. What the? What? Whoa, whoa, what? Wait a minute. What the fuck? Did I hear that right? What? 
one, the man I saw at my apartment. It was around the time that our area was plagued by lots of sexual assault cases. And there was advice for us, which used to be that if someone followed you, look straight at his eyes and talk. Then one day, I was coming back home after hanging out with my friend. I saw a middle-aged man walking behind me. Wow. And suddenly I felt like he was following me. And he literally came wow. to the apartment elevator. So I turned around intentionally and greeted him, smiling. Hello. He pretended not to hear me at first. So I spoke to him, making eye contact with him more and more. I think I've never seen you in this apartment before. Did you move here? He, this time, looked at me with his eyes wide open and then ran away from the spot. And I rushed towards the security office to report what I had experienced just before. And the moment when I saw the CCTV there, I had no choice but to just freeze in there. I was talking to myself, staring into the air. Holy shit! Two, the note in the trash can. It was during class time. I was exchanging a little note with one of my friends writing just a boring story, you know. And after class, I tore up the paper and threw it into the trash can. On my way home after school, I realized that I had left some of my stuff in my locker, so I headed back to the classroom. But I felt something strange when I arrived in front of the class. So before I opened the front door, I slowly looked at people through the window next to the door, and when I looked inside, there was another of my classmates there. And... He was picking up my torn note that I had exchanged with my friend in the trash, assorting it as if it were like a puzzle and reading it. Three, what? how do you know? One oh. day I ran into my neighbor in the elevator. Oh, ew. Hey, I recently got to know a lot of good songs these days, thanks to you. Oh yeah, that's nice. Stop talking. Stop, stop. I'm gonna hit you on your balls. Stop, I'm getting so much cluck vibes from you, it's crazy. Just stop. Just stop. I'm I'm ready. Just, just squeeze your balls. Shut the hell up, please. By the way, do you want to hear my ringtone? He said like this and turned on his ringtone, which was one that I used to listen to at home by myself these days. For your information, I've never heard it loud enough to be heard in the hallway, and I was positive that I haven't let him know the name of the song either. Did I? When I asked, he replied, Yeah, sometimes I put my ears to your front door and I could hear everything. It turns out that he was a man who didn't mind eavesdropping at random people's doors. As soon as I heard it, I got sudden goosebumps and didn't want to live here anymore. I feel like I'm going to move to another place as soon as my house contract is over. Huh, Four. wait. The taxi driver. You better not say, you better not say, you better not say, you better not say, you better not say exactly where you moving to on the phone. You better text that junk. When I was in high school, I would always go to school early at 5 a.m. around during the exam period. My school was a little far away from where I lived, so I used to take a taxi with my friend at that time. However, I came out too early that day, so I had to ride alone. So I was on my way to the school. Then I realized that the driver was wearing sunglasses, even though it was dawn. And I felt like... He I hate when people do that. I hate when people do that. Like at Chipotle, Ch Chipotle customers are infamous for that. Like, it'd be dumb dark outside. Or it'll be it'll be like during the day, and but it's cloudy, right? Or it's a little dark because of the clouds. And I'm talking to my coworkers. I'm like, this is this is literally what I said. I was like, where the sun at? Huh? Where the sun, where the sun? Why do you have on shades if it's if it's not if it's dark outside? You know what I mean? That's, and then. I don't like it when they come in and they still have their shades on. Glancing at me through the side mirror. 
How old are you? Wow. I answered his sudden question. 18. Wow. I kept driving without saying anything and he suddenly stopped where the car had to turn left. Then he called me. Get off. Excuse me? Totally freaking out, I asked him and he calmly replied. I said, get off. You couldn't have gotten off if you weren't the same age as my daughter, you know? Wow. The moment I heard his words, I got goosebumps from head to toe. I ended up getting off the car without looking back and ran away to school. Five, the talisman. There was a pretty famous fortune teller in our town that everyone knew. And this year they started to make talismans for free for those who are weak or in bad situations. I didn't think of it that much at first. Since it was just a talisman, there was a rumor about its effectiveness, but you know, it wasn't sufficiently proven. Then one day, my mom's friend made a talisman from there for her son who became a middle school student, and he eventually carried it in his wallet. But one of his friends took the talisman from his wallet and played a prank on it. He rubbed the talisman on the stone and it got crumpled all over the place. And the incident happened the next day. While her son was riding his bike to school, he was hit by a dump truck in front of the main gate, which ended up becoming a paraplegic. I got goosebumps and afterward, I repeatedly asked my mom not to even think about getting anything like a talisman from the fortune tellers for a while. God damn it. I wish somebody would give me a talisman. What is that? Is that, is that, is that real? I don't know. No. I don't want nothing that, that can foresee my uh my death. No. Nah, I don't want that. You got no. Um But Sorry. The first one, I forgot his name. I forgot his name. Sasha the J. Um He was just He was just Jesus. Oh my God. He man, it was it was so many things like I want wrong with him is so many things that's like that was like kinda like uh like kinda sus in it like He he needed to be in one of those in one of those uh places like that have the straight jackets. Like like one of them jackets that like you just like this and you can't move like you can't get free. You know, yeah, one of those. Um uh, what what number was this? Oh, okay. I guess number one, the man I saw at my apartment, she's that whole apartment is clucked. And they knew that. They just didn't tell her that when she moved in. That's clucked up. That's disgusting. What's it? What's it? What's it? What's it? Oh, how did you? The story number three. How did you know? With the guy listening, like pressed up against her door, her walls. That's. Let me know if any of you all have like very sus neighbors and what makes them sus in the comment section below. Put that in the comment. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family. Oh shit, I thought I already, I don't know.